Okay, in this video, I'm going to try and take us through two poems. Well, in this video, I'm just going to look at the poem, Eat Me. And in the second poem, I'm going to look at the poem, um, A Leisure Center uh, is also a temple of learning. And we're going to look at the theme of the body. And what I want to do is I want to try and complete the table. This is for year 12 at Excel, new spec uh, literature. We're going to look at some of just the basics in this poem. The speaker, the themes, the language, the structure, the form, the imagery, and some key quotes. So I'm going to do this just by, by basically reading the poem, then we'll fill out the table. I'll do that again for the second poem, and then we can start to construct an essay. Um, when I hit 30, he bought me a cake, three layers of icing, homemade, a candle for each stone and weight. Um, I think verbs are really important. Uh, hitting hitting thirty uh, is 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 something she's she's almost slamming into her age. Uh, uh, this he, who is this? Who is this he? We will later learn it's the boyfriend, unnamed. Cake. Wait, we get that rhyme right away, um, and we get the idea that she's 30 stone, 30 years. The icing was white, white, but the letters were pink. They said, eat me, and I ate, did what I was told, didn't even taste it. Okay, there are a few things here. Eat Me, of course, is that reference to Alice in Wonderland. And that was, the, that was Alice, um, you know, ate, uh, uh, I think it was a mushroom. No, I can't remember what it was. She ate something and she shrunk. She drank something and she blew up. Here we get that idea as well, that food, food is something that controls women. Um... And uh, she did what she was told. I ate, did what I was told. That, that uh, enjambment, enjambment means the line continues past the line break. I did what I was told uh, is, again, an aspect of control. But what's interesting is the difference between eating and tasting. So tasting is pleasure. Eating seems to be about control. Then he asked me to get up and walk. Well, that's strange that he asked me. He didn't order, because sometimes having control of someone isn't just about telling them what to do. You want to feel that maybe they have options. To get up and walk around the bed so he could watch my broad belly wobble. That alliteration, bees, really emphasizes the fat, really emphasizes the movement. Hips judder like a juggernaut. We get that again, the J's and the D's. So all of that is to emphasize. Now, you know, I think what's really disturbing about this poem is, uh, in terms of women's uh, self-perception and their presentation in the media, and I don't think it's just with women. All of us have a kind of um, sensitivity and insecurity about how we look. Here, uh, I think Agbabi is playing with us, is, is, is frustrating, almost trying to disturb and disgust us with this idea of this woman's body. And what should be maybe a, a great thing that a man enjoys a larger woman, there, there's something disturbing in the way he orders her, and, and, and takes pleasure. Uh, there's, something, there's something strange about the way he takes pleasure from looking and controlling. Even though he asks, the bigger the better, he'd say. I like big girls, soft girls, girls I can burrow inside with multiple chins, masses of cellulite. So obviously this is, he's the second speaker here. But the word that sticks out to me is here, burrow. 
dig inside. He is he's drawn to fat. He's it's not her that he loves. It is something about her. And uh this is again, this is disturbing. He's he's objectifying her. And this isn't someone he just wants a skinny kind of uh, you know, uh, 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 model or actress type. Fine, it's a different body type, but it is still an objectification. And that continues now. Uh, I was his jacuzzi metaphor. Uh, he, I was the place which was warm, that he soaked in. Uh, he was my cook. My only pleasure, the rush of fast food, his pleasure to watch me swell like forbidden fruit. So again, this only pleasure and his pleasure, you get that contrast, the rush of fast food, the sugar, um, you know, that, that quick hit. His pleasure, on the other hand, swell. I mean, swell would be more, most ple like pregnancy suggests. But no, it's something like forbidden fruit, which makes us think of uh, Adam and Eve. But it also makes us realize that there's something wrong in what's happening here. There's something negative. This shouldn't be going on. His breadfruit, this large um, fruit. Uh, his desert island after shipwreck. Again, we get this series of metaphors. I wasn't like this. I was this. I was his breadfruit. I was his desert island. It begs the question of after shipwreck, what, what problems have they had? Um, yes, this emphasizes the image of her as being a kind of isolated, round, stationary object, but what, what's the problem? Or, quickly changing, a beached whale on a king-sized bed craving a wave. So now, very quickly, we get the image switched we get juxtaposition, a list of metaphors. Um, the word craving really comes out there. Uh, she was a beached whale. She was stuck on this king size w w bed. And here we get this indication she wants something more. She craves a wave. We get that internal rhyme. She craves a wave. She wants to get out of this. She continues, she extends the metaphor. No, she juxtaposes, she changes it again. I was a tidal wave of flesh. Again, you get that image of how just enormous she was. Uh, too fat to leave, too fat to buy a pint of full fat milk, too fat to use fat as an emotional shield, too fat to be called chubby, cuddly, well-built. The repetition here is, you know, self-loathing a need for escape. She can't hide behind, you know, these words for fat. She was excessive. It was beyond. And this happened for, I mean, this is an enormously odd poem for me because then it's, 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 it's nine years. The day I hit 39, I allowed him Permission and control work throughout this poem in interesting ways, I think. I allowed him to stroke my globe of a cheek. Again, these metaphors emphasize size. His flesh, my flesh, flowed. He said, open wide. He poured olive oil down my throat. He whispered, and how could I not, how could I not, this is, um, you know, desire out of control. She, she's, you know, this, this idea that she had no choice, because she almost says, how could I not roll over on top? I rolled and he drowned in my flesh. I rolled and he drowned. We get that, you know, flesh and water continues. Uh, I drowned his dying sentence out. So she killed him, but she also shut him up.
we don't we don't get the sense that he talks too much, but there is a kind of maybe that could be a symbol of her stopping the control. Then we get this strange ending. I left him there for six hours that felt like a week. So again, time. The poem has taken um, nine years. And now time again is strange. I left him there for six hours and it felt like a week. His mouth slightly open, his eyes bulging with greed. He liked it. Then he did. Then he died. There was a kind of, uh, you know, wanting, never ending, wanting for the sake of wanting. She's the large one, but he's actually the greedy one. There was nothing else left in the house to eat. I find with many of the poems in this anthology, openings and closings are really important. This this is really really a frightening opening, uh, closing rather. Um, does she eat him? Uh, is it a closure of eating? So there's no more. There's no more to eat. Is it a closure of greed? Uh, does she feel free? Is she trapped? I think that uh, poetry is not about closing off these meanings. I think the ending has all those possibilities present in it. That's my reading, basically, of this poem. I'm going to now, uh, in, the, in the next poem, I'm going to look at, uh, the next poem I'm going to look at is a leisure uh, center is also a temple of learning. And then we're going to fill out the table and put together our essay to answer this question.